They say that only death and taxes are certain in this life, but I'd like to add a third item to that list, grocery shopping. No matter your lifestyle, your location, or your social status, in some way, shape, or form, you are making a list, checking it twice, and procuring your chicken and rice. Today, we're talking about my favorite way to keep a grocery list on my iPhone, and best of all, it takes just a few moments to get set up and does not require any additional apps or purchases. So let's jump into it. This grocery list method uses the Apple Reminders app and leverages a special list type called Groceries. To get one set up, simply go to the Reminders app on any Apple device, select Add List, give it a name and an icon, and be sure to change the list type to groceries. Just like that, you're ready to go. Now comes the magic. When adding items, this list will automatically categorize them. Add carrots, it goes into produce. Need sugar, it's in baking items. Run out of toilet paper, it's there in household items. I'm sure you can already see the time savings this could afford you when you're planning your grocery list and when you get to the store. The good news is that even if something goes wrong, you can fix it. If an item goes into the wrong group, simply drag it down to the right one. After doing this, anytime you add this same item in the future, it will automatically go into the adjusted group. For example, when I input tomato sauce, it defaults into produce. But at my local stores, this is in the same aisle as canned goods. So I'm gonna drag it down to canned foods and soups. Now, after picking one up, I decided that I need to add it to the list again. This time, it automatically defaults to the canned food section. This makes optimizing your list according to your preferences simple. Want to change a category label altogether? That's no problem as well. If canned foods and soup is too wordy, simplify it by changing it to just canned foods. You can even add your own custom categories if you want something super specific. Do you have a few products that you pick up from a specific grocer, like maybe Trader Joe's? Make a category and drag the items you want over there. Now, the next time you add your everything but the bagel seasoning, it'll go straight to your Trader Joe's category. One drawback I've found is that once a default is changed, it's difficult to see where it was originally mapped, at least on the iPhone app. However, if you have a Mac, you'll be able to see an option to move it back to the original location. This is a great way to fix a one-off mistake. If, however, you get completely messed up, you can actually reset these categorizations. To do that, go into your settings on either your phone or on a Mac, and just go to Settings, Reminders, and select the Reset Categories option. Now that you have your list and know a little about how to customize it, let's talk more about using it. In addition to manually keying items to add, you can also ask Siri to add chicken to the shopping list. Oh, and add rice as well. When you get to the store, you can mark items complete by tapping the circle next to each one. Make a mistake, you can always add it again, or click on the three dots in the top right corner and select Show Completed. Then you can unclick the mistake to bring it back to the list. If you want to fully remove an item, swipe to the left and see the option to delete. You can also flag an item or add more details. Details are great if you share a list with others and want to make sure that you pick up a specific brand of a product. Speaking of sharing, these lists can be collaborative with family members or roommates. Simply click the share button at the top and add a collaborator. You even have the option to decide whether the people that you add can invite others or not. Once a list is shared, you have additional settings now for notifications around when items are added or when items are marked completed by others. If you're using this for a simple grocery list, my recommendation is to turn both of these off to avoid getting spammed with notifications every grocery trip. Finally, my last recommendation is around using multiple grocery lists. If you've got multiple stores that you frequent for different types of products, you can keep distinct grocery lists for each one. Maybe you've got one for generic groceries, another for Costco or some other bulk retailer, and one for a specialty retailer like Trader Joe's. 
The options are really endless, and you could just ask Siri to add it to the specific list that you need it on. I hope this guide has helped you to make your grocery shopping experience a little less scary than death and taxes. Try it out and let me know how it goes down in the comments. If you want more iPhone tips, check out my video on hidden iPhone features. You may learn even more over there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.